Hello guys and welcome back to topic 2 of ITGS and this time we're doing it in the afternoon so hopefully my brain is working better. Um, Alright, so we covered topic 1 in the, in the past video and there's really not much to topic 1, just pure memorization. In fact, ITGS, if you look at the past exam papers, you can see that it's mostly just memorization. You know, they're asking for um, how different topics essentially how they interlink with one another. Uh, so today we'll be going through topic two. One second, just let me pick my pencil up on the ground. Okay, uh, let's see. So going back to my study group file. So hardware, hardware. I bet a lot of you know a lot about hardware, probably, probably more than I do because I don't know what you guys have to do, but if you pick ITGS, you probably are into computers. Okay, so let's go through basic hardware. I will have my textbook with me, just in case I miss something out on the slide. Okay, so computers are divided into a few categories. So first of all, we have supercomputers. So they are, like the name said, supercomputers. They are fast, large, powerful, and expensive. A good example would be IBM's. Uh, Blue Series supercomputer, or Apple's, you know, supercomputer, NASA supercomputer, all of those are supercomputers. So they process through this thing called either as they mostly uses um, centralized processing uh, system, and it has a very high processing speed because it's got a lot of cores. So um, it has thousands of primary storage, usually referred to as RAM and many terabytes of secondary storage. Terabytes, petabytes, depending on what you need to, to use. If you don't want to run a model on it, then you probably need, need then you probably need a few petabytes of storage. And then we have mainframes. Okay, it's important to differentiate mainframes and supercomputers. They are very similar, they're all very powerful, but mainframe is optimized specifically for compact for complex calculations. So those supercomputers may be used to let's say, do things such as um, simulations, mainframe mostly just crunch numbers. And then desktop, uh, laptops and smartphones, I'm not going to explain those. You guys know exactly what those are. <laughs> desktop, you know, you're either watching this on a desktop or a laptop now. I doubt you'll watch this on your phone because, you know, get a life. Um, oh yeah, and then personal digital assistant. PDA, not public display of affection. Uh, remember, it's different. Okay, and then we have embedded system, which is a computer hidden in another device. For example, when you have GPS in a car, or anti-lock, anti-lock breaking in the car's engine systems. So this is something that we can talk about when we do our case study, which is about cars. And they serve a single special function. You know this embedded system is just for anti bricks This embedded system is just for slowing down, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, and then the second category will be input devices. Um, there's a lot of input devices. You're probably holding one right now. It's called a mouse or typing on one called a keyboard. So mice, trackball, microphone, game controllers, they are all input devices. But here's what IB wants to you to learn. They want you to talk about the future. Again, I apologize for my fast speaking, but it's how it's going to be. It's a rushed, last-minute improvised review. So concept keyboards, so they are like MIDI keyboards, if you know what they are. Um, this is an example of um, a keyboard, a concept keyboard. So each button is programmed to do a specific function. In this case, it is, you know, to play a set of sound. <coughs> Soft keyboard, virtual keyboard. For example, the laser keyboard they invented a few days ago. A few days, a few years by now, right? Yeah. This is an example of a soft keyboard. It's not real. Or even better soft keyboard you use every day. It would be the keyboard on your phone <laughs> or on your iPad. And then smart cards, I'm not going to talk about those. You probably know what they are. They have embedded processors. They can be plastic. Um, I have one that is my credit card that is metal, but uh, most of them are plastic. And magnetic stripe readers, you know, you know what those are. Optical mark recognition, 
when we fill into you know SAT, ACT test, when they put our test through those machines, those are essentially optical mark recognition. So they're looking at what multiple choice we did. So an ACT test would be a good answer. Magnetic ink recognition. Now this is something different. Um, I personally have not encountered magnetic ink recognition, but there definitely is this thing. It's in the, it's in the textbook. <laughs> Scanners, we know that. Uh, sensors, probes, know this. This is good for case study. Digital cameras, you know what they, you know what those are. Webcams, you know what those are. It's on your computer. RFID radio ta radio tags. They are used in a lot of things, such as you know when you go to a grocery store, you can't take an unpaid object out of the store because the whole siren will go off. Now that will be an RFID. It can identify which product didn't pass the paycheck. The paycheck they didn't pass the pay counter, and essentially those are radio frequency identification RFID. So RFID consists of a tag, which looks something like it's like a plastic bulk, <laughs> like a plastic bulk, something like that. And then a reader, which is like a long. It's a, usually a large range reader that spreads over, let's say a local local storage system. Um, I believe it's called it's called SAN. Storage area network. Um, so they can be implemented into skin of pets to uh, track them or to track their uh, positions, blood pressure, etc., etc. They are used in passport by countries such as UK, US, and now just started by China. Um, yeah, passports. <laughs> the concern is against uh, privacy and surveillance. If you don't know what those are, look at the first video. Now we talk about awkward devices, so what comes out and what gives you feedback. So screens, they have old, old cathode ray tube screens. We don't use them anymore because those, those are really large and bulky. Now we have LCDs, um, and recently Apple iPhone 10 have OLED. I think it's iPhone 10 or is it iPhone 10 S have OLED this week. Then speakers is output, printers output, they are ink, they are inkjet, inkjet, or um, laser printers. Yeah, there's a two, two type of printers, and they print based on DPI dots per inch. Um, the more dots per inch, essentially, the higher the quality the um, printout will be. Now we have um, computer aid for disabled users. Now uh, this is something that will definitely be a good way to answer the last question of paper two which is, you know, when they ask, what are some solutions? And this is all the solutions for hardware. Um, we have optical, so if you have bad eyesight, you know, we have um, speech to text to speech, we have screen magnification, we have barley keyboard for blind people. Is that barley keyboard? I actually don't know how to pronounce that, but just know how to spell it. <laughs> and then we also have things like uh, high contrast mode. So, and then for, mo for mobility disabled users like Stephen Hawking, we have tripods, we have sticky keys. And then for those really severe, we have a uh, head one, which essentially is like a head control system. A camera would uh, track your eyesight or track the head to convert, its, to convert the movement into the cursor movement. Um, now we have processor technology. We have microprocessors, so basically what's in your CPU. Every computer has that. So they're responsible for performing all instruction and tasks that a computer needs to do. Um, they are calculated in MIPS, millions of instructions per second, and or their, their clock speed is counted in megahertz or gigahertz. Commonly, we are counting it in gigahertz in 20th century, because that's what, that's kind of like the standard. If you don't have a gigahertz in your processor, you're running a really old computer. So note that the speed of processor does determine the completion of the task, the quickness of it, but it is also important to know that the race to higher clock speed um, has ended. Now we have multi-core processing instead of single core. Um, so motherboards, come on. You probably looked at one, at least one Linus Tech Tech videos, and you know what motherboards are. They are basically a thing that connects everything together. Hence the name motherboard. They connect RAM, hard disk, expansion cards, video and sound cards, etc., etc. Storage devices, this can definitely link to a database unit. So primary storage 
is I find it a bit strange, but sometimes primary storage they refer to SSDs, sometimes they refer it to RAM. So commonly I refer it to SSDs, but uh, unless the question specify it to be RAM. Um, now RAM are random access memory, so they're like a kind of like a cache. So a cache, however you want to pronounce that. So they store short-term information, so just to keep your computer feeling fast and snappy. So secondary storage, load it into RAM, processor reads from RAM, and then stores back into RAM, just in case we need to open it soon. Read-only memory, oh, it's my bad. A random access memory is volatile, which means when you shut down, it clears, and all of the information stored in the RAM will be cleared. Now you can see I have three gigabyte of RAM free, but I can click free up, and it will start to free up RAM. Let's watch this process. Oh, this is kind of boring. I just realized. Come on, uh, have to go again. Now we have five, four gigahertz, four gigabytes, my bad. And read-only memory is primary storage cannot content that cannot be read, such as if you have a Windows computer, System 34, I believe it's unreadable. For MacBook, the source code is are unreadable. I mean, they can be read, but they cannot be changed. That's what I meant. Magnetic tapes, those are old, old datas. Um, usually we don't use them, but they are somewhat good for backing up or archiving because they are really, really cheap. A magnetic disk, I have seen one in my grandfather's computer. Gosh, is it horrendous. <laughs> this huge thing, no, sorry, that's not, that's HDD. Magnetic disk, we are talking about those, those things. A huge disk and it's only a few megabytes of storage. So it's connected, uh, it can be used as an external hard drive, but I doubt anybody will use it. Um, optical storage, that's CDs, DVDs, laser, you know, Blu-ray, Blu those things. Flash memory, USB, basically USBs. They are uh, less susceptible to damage because unlike a hard drive, they have no moving parts. Essentially what flash memory is talking about is talking about SSDs or flash storage like SanDisk or Kingston. And they use less power than hard disks, and they are much faster than hard disks. So, okay, now we talk about hard drive security and privacy. No, security and privacy, those are ethical concerns. Um, so when we don't have, when we don't want to use a computer anymore, we tend to throw it away. Or at least my mom threw, threw my old computer away, and I was really sad about it. It was really old, but it had good memories on it, you know. And... <clears throat> It is important to know that if you throw hard drive away, if you you know just delete and then throw it away, they technically still have everything contained in the hard disk. But think of it as a hard disk is a book, and you can only computer is a bit dumb. You can only locate the book given the page of content, given the index, and when you delete a file, it essentially deletes the index, so the computer think that it is blank. But in reality, it is not blank. So it is important to know that never, never throw away a hard disk without securely wiping it or physically destroying the hard disk. Like, you know, you have SSD, put a strong magnet next to it, destroy all the data, and then throw it away, or and then give it to somebody else and torment them. Um, <laughs> okay. Storing data, this is probably the, the, this is definitely the only calculation the ITG has. 8-bit is a byte. 1024 byte is a kilobyte, and then so on and so forth, megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte, petabyte, so on and so forth. Um, okay, so there are two common standards in terms of um, standard code for information exchange. There's Unicode and there's the American Standard Code. So this is each eight, each eight bit represents a single English character. Now I doubt you need to know this much specific, uh, so just know that these two things are different. You know, we usually we use uh, uni Unicode, I believe. OS is based on Unicode, and then this is a little bit outdated, but some computer system still use them. And the last bit is will be failover system. So they're basically like safe say safeties for computers. So if you're running a big database, if you're running a big server, you don't want to, you know, crash. So we have um, what is called a redundant system. Uh, we have things such as 
um, an uninterrupted power supply. So when the primary power supply fails, the secondary power supply can kick in and still maintain the server for a good period of time. <coughs> or you have a, a, a system that's configured in RAID. Now, RAID stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks. So there are essentially a lot of disks arranged to mirror one another. So when you write file into, into the first hard drive, the second hard drive will automatically copy the first hard drive. So when your first hard drive, let's say, dies or substantial to water damage, the second hard drive can still have every information you have. So it's like a iCloud syncing device. I mean, we use iCloud, I use iCloud. So let's say if I store my friend's photos on my phone, and then I have it synced to iCloud. So iCloud stores the information as well. So when my phone, let's say my phone breaks, I can retrieve all the photos from iCloud. Now, however, if you're storing it in a cloud server that is run by a third party, the question of security, privacy, surveillance, and all those things kick his, kicks in once again. Anyways, this has been part two, topic two of ITGS. And I hope you learned something for from this last minute review. And memorize anything you can. It will be helpful on the exam. ITGS is strong memory. I mean, majority, majority of ITGS comes down to memorization and linking it to the strands. So understand the strands well. I can't stress that enough. And no key points from every unit, and then you're good to go. And also memorize the definitions. And I will see you guys in topic three.